Critical values plays a very vital role in determining the interval estimates. Critical values could be obtained depending upon what the distribution of our random variable is. Either it is standard normal or it is T distribution, it's chi distribution or it is F distribution. Depending upon which distribution does our random variable follows, we will use respective method to calculate this critical value. Here in this module, we will have a short demo of calculating the critical values in Microsoft Excel for the standard normal distribution and T distribution. Here, we have specifically started with the results for T distribution. This is the table we have seen earlier as well, that if our confidence level will be 10%, our two-tailed alpha level will be 90%, and as our confidence level is growing, our two-tailed alpha level is going down because two-tailed alpha level will give us alpha values and confidence level is 1 minus alpha. So in this table, we have determined the areas under the T distribution curve to find out the various critical values for the T distribution. This table here gives us the degrees of freedom where we will be calculating the T values at degrees of freedom 11, 12, 13, 15, and infinity, where we, we have kept infinity to be a larger value. So in this table, if you look at this value, the very first value is for two-tailed, 90% significance level or 10% confidence level with 11 degrees of freedom, which shows there is 12.86% area under the curve for the T distribution. And similarly, for other values, to calculate this area, we use a function in Microsoft Excel, which is T inverse. And to write down this function, we write equal T inverse T I N V 0 0.9, which is alpha commas, it's degrees of freedom. And we close the bracket. As you, we hit enter, the value will be given into our table. Likewise, for 95% confidence level or 5% alpha significance level, to calculate the, the table value at 11 degrees of freedom, we have done equal T I N V 0 0.05, which is alpha level, and A7 refers to our degree of freedom in the A7 cell in Microsoft Excel. Hence, it is 11. One must notice the values at infinity. Here, we already know that for larger sample sizes or at larger degrees of freedom, T distribution will tend to, to approximate to the normal probability distribution. So all these values given here 
will actually correspond pretty well to the values coming from the standard normal distribution. Though we have calculated these values using T inverse function, that is to calculate the probabilities or critical values for the T distribution. Let's firstly look at that how to find the critical values of T when our population standard deviation is unknown. Later on, in the next modules, we will further discuss that how this terminology standard deviation is known and unknown work out. Here, for two-tailed test, if we need to calculate the critical value, we'll simply write T inverse alpha by 2 along with its degrees of freedom. If we want to calculate this probability at 5% significance level, we can either simply write 0 0.05 and calculate this value. But it's a bit different for right tail critical values. When we calculate right tail critical value at 5%, that, that's going to talk about the one-tailed, then it will be this value, that one-tailed 0 0.05 is going to give us one tailed significance value, one tailed critical value at 11 degrees of freedom. To calculate this value, one need to make sure that in the older version of Microsoft Excel, we had to multiply our desired level of significance by two because T inverse function only takes up the two-tailed alpha values. Hence, if you multiply it by 2, it's going to give us 0 0.10. So apparently, at T inverse, 0 0.10 and 11 is going to give us one-tailed T value, one tail critical value for T distribution at 0 0.05 level of significance. And similarly for left tail critical value, we follow the same procedure because it's a symmetric distribution, so we'll just add minus next to it with T 0 0.01 and it at 11 degrees of freedom. This function, though it takes a value of probability to be 10%, it's still going to give us the 5% value. Let's look at the finding the critical values of Z when population standard deviation is known. In that case, the, the exact distribution will be normal distribution. To calculate two-tailed critical value, the function we will use is norm s inverse 1 minus alpha by 2, which is going to give us 1.96, which is the critical value at 5% significance level. Here, one can notice that at 5% significance level, for a two-tailed t-test at infinity, the value is approximately 1.96. Similarly, for the right tailed critical value, the function we will use is norm s inverse 1 minus alpha. And when alpha is 5%, it will be norm s inverse 1 minus 0 0.05, which will give us 1.645. And one can simply see it that here in the t distribution, the value is 1.645. For left tail critical value, the function we use is norm s inverse just alpha which will be 0 0.05, and it's going to help us to calculate the left tail critical value for the Z distribution. Thank you.